1995 Buick LeSabre. The issue with this car is it has an EGR trouble code. It's a P1406. And this is a linear type EGR. It's a digital valve. There's no vacuum controls to it. And it's this guy here in the screen. So it's five wire. The two outer wires are for the solenoid. The three middle wires are a potentiometer or valve position. Get you a quick shot on the scan tool of the code. And the code we're going after is this P1406. So the next thing I like to do after trouble code is let's take a look at the data that's on this. And we're gonna go back to our data display. And I had this set up previously, so it should still pop up the way I had it configured. And it is. And our focus is on three main data PIDs. And those three PIDs would be EGR position percentage, bottom left, EGR position, sorry, this is desired, desired EGR percentage on the left, this, uh, EGR position percentage top right, and then EGR valve position voltage. This percentage is based off this voltage. Right away we see a problem. This voltage should be around a half a volt, under one volt, say between a half a volt and one volt with closed valve. And we've done a few of these in the past. I think they were like 0 0.6, 0 0.7 maybe. Closed valve position, so we have an issue here right away. The next thing I like to do with these, depending on the year, is to bi-directionally control the valve or command the valve to open. Unfortunately, on this year, I can't do it. The only thing I have available to me is data display, my codes, and then clear codes go back again and I just have my troubleshooter so no functional tests on this year at all so we have to manually energize this valve to open it um, so we're gonna do that we're gonna open the valve and we're gonna watch our position sensor voltage on the scan tool when we do it so let's go back to our data And got to recustomize this. Don't really need the RPM in there, but we'll throw it in there anyway. Those four PIDs. And before we do the test, let me get you down on the valve and we'll talk about the solenoid. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to back probe this connector, get off of this auto range. My two outer wires are the solenoid control. The three middle wires are for the potentiometer. Before we manually energize this valve, we need to know if it's power or ground side switched. We can use a diagram. In this case, we're gonna use a voltmeter. I have this information, section three in my book, transistor drivers, output solenoid, so this will be a real good review for that. And first thing I'm gonna do is back probe this pink wire. And uh, I'll block that. We got 12 volts showing. On the voltmeter on that wire, come out here to the outer wire, so I'm on the two ends. And I have 12 volts on that wire too. So first thing we know is it is ground side switched. Second thing would be, how do you know which one is the ground, controlled ground, which one's the feed? It's real simple, you unplug it. So unplug the, the solenoid connector and you see that that outer wire dropped to basically zero volts. Plug it back in and it jumps up to 12. That is my control wire. I can safely ground that circuit. Now something else that's pretty cool that I don't know if I've shown before. Know how to use your meter. Know how to use your equipment. This is a controlled ground. I can give it a ground through my meter by very simply switching my red lead over to my amp port. I'm already connected to ground, and so what we'll have is a jumper wire. An amp meter is nothing more than a jumper wire with a gauge on it. So it switches to amps. We don't need the amperage reading, but we can show it too. Move this over. See if the camera picks up that click. That's on and off. So that's energized right now. We got a reading of around 1.3 amps. That solenoid is energized right now. And over on the scan tool real quick. 
notice that my position voltage did not change, it's staying at zero. So now is that valve opening? We hear it click, is it actually opening? There's a nice test for that. Let's come back to the car. What we'll do is we'll redo this test. I'm gonna take this out of the amp port, close the valve, zero amps. We're gonna start the car. And when I energize this, the car should pretty much get rough and stall, telling me the valve actually opened. Go ahead, start it. So I'm giving this solenoid a ground through my amp meter. Okay, go ahead, shut it off. So what that test told me, not only is the clicking that we heard good, telling me we have control, but that yes, in fact, that valve is opening by the fact that this thing got real, real rough. Our focus now goes toward this position sensor. Don't forget to take your lead back out of the amp port, go back to voltage anytime you're done doing testing over here, you have to. Regardless of what you do up here, if you leave that over there, you still have a jumper wire in your hand, so be careful with that. Going back to DC volts, I'm gonna go my middle wire, which is my position sensor signal wire. And we're gonna to wanna to have the key on for this test. Remember, we, we read zero volts on the scan tool for this. And you see we're reading zero volts on the voltmeter too on this signal wire. So a lot of people at this point would put an EGR valve in this. You have zero volts on a signal wire, let's throw a valve in it. In fact, a lot of people, based on the trouble code, would throw an EGR valve in this. So this next part will be a real good review for section seven in my book, which is potentiometers. And that's what we're dealing with here. A potentiometer has a five volt ref, a signal and a ground. I'm on the signal wire. We have zero volts here all the time. Next thing you have to do when you have no signal is check your reference, check your ground, check for opens and shorts. In the signal circuit, next step, we're gonna check the reference. So all I'm gonna do is move my my lead down, I have a gray wire here, a black wire here in the middle. Gray wire is my reference, black wire is my ground. I'll start with the ground. I have zero volts on that ground, that's a good ground. Less than 100 millivolts is what we want. Next thing, check the reference circuit. And now we have a problem. This reference should be five volts and I'm reading zero, 0 0.06. So this is what's causing this trouble code. No reference voltage, you're not gonna have a signal, we don't need an EGR valve, we have a wiring problem. So the car runs, this is a five volt reference. We've done other, other videos that deal with no five volt reference where a car doesn't run, shorted reference circuit. Not the case here, this car runs. It's real easy to figure out if the circuit's shorted by the simple fact the car runs, and then another one would be to check another sensor that uses the five volt reference. So there's another gray wire on the TPS. I'm gonna go right to that, which is right next to it. It's right here. And we're gonna back probe this TPS circuit. And you can see on my meter, I have five volts on my TPS. So my reference circuit isn't shorted. What we're dealing with is an open to this EVP signal, EGR valve position sensor signal. We have an open on this five volt reference line going to the valve. It's not a short to ground because a short to ground would pull everything down. So before we start attacking this harness and, and pulling everything apart, our next step is to check that same reference wire in another location at another sensor or at the computer. So we need a wiring diagram now. Okay, here's my EGR valve in this diagram. This gray wire right here is my reference. Goes to the next page, so it just comes down, there's no splices. Goes to the next page. It's right here, so it comes over this way, down here, right to the computer, and it says five volt ref. There are no splices in that leg of this five volt reference circuit. Now we know for a fact that this five volt ref goes to other circuits, 
We know for sure the TPS is on it. You would think by looking at the diagram that there's only one circuit using this 5 volt reference, but that's not the case. For some other videos, just type in 5 volt reference circuit under my username and I have a, a, at least three or four other videos that deal with a reference circuit and how they're actually shared internally and you know what looks like a single circuit is not or in this case we look at the other part of the diagram and we see another 5 volt ref it looks like two separate 5 volt reference circuits it's not it's the same but what's nice to know for us for this step is there are no other shared circuits so what I don't want to do is pull this whole harness apart I want to go at the computer now take a measurement here if I read 5 at this location right here and we read 0 at our EGR here showed you guys that one already if we read 0 here and we read 5 here then we have an open in the harness again we're not worried about a short the ground because of symptoms and the fact that my TPS has five. If I read zero at the computer, then we have a computer problem. It's that simple. So we're going to the computer next, doing a voltage measurement right there. Okay, we've already identified the pin on the computer and I have it back probed. It's a gray wire here. This is our reference to our EGR. Get you a reading on the voltmeter. We see our same zero volt signal. Our reference is zero at the computer. It is also zero at the EGR valve. Again, we're not worried about a short to ground here, guys, because if this wire was shorted to ground, it would pull the entire five volt reference to ground. Not the case. So what we have, what this is looking like is a bad computer. Let's get a shot of the other five volt reference. Okay, this is my other five volt reference circuit. This goes to the TPS. And I didn't see on the diagram that it went anywhere else. So I'm just going to rest this against the T-pin if I can and get a voltage reading on this circuit. Now we already checked it externally. I just want you guys to see that. And I'll take you up to the meter. And there you go. Your 5 volts to your TPS is good. Further confirming again that we don't have a short to ground on the EVP 5 volt reference circuit because if we did it would pull this one down too. There are not two separate 5 volt reference circuits. There's only one. I know externally it looks like there's two. There's not. It's one circuit. So really at this point we only have one other option and that would be a spread apart pin on the computer connector on this EVP circuit. It's either going to be that or it's a bad computer. So we'll check the pin real quick. All right, so we're gonna check this pin. And I've had some real good questions on this and I, I've mentioned how to do it. I'm gonna show it. I think this is the, probably the first time I've shown this. But you can see the, the gray wire that, that I have back probed. It's, if you count the pins, it's actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven down from the top. And so we flip this over it's these inside holes right here not the outside so it'd be seven down so it's one two three four five six seven so it's that pin right there that that's the one we want to worry about in fact I'm gonna mark that real quick with my pen So it's that one right there. Let me count again. Yep. All right. So that's the that's the one in question. Is that is there a potential that that pin is spread apart in there? You definitely can't see it. You can't do a visual. So what we want to use is uh, this is uh, made by this company. Uh, one of you guys asked me recently where I get these. I don't know. I get them from our tool room here at the school So I'm not sure where they get them, but that's the company that makes it what these are is uh, is uh, torch tip cleaners and what they have is is um, different size Different size cleaning tips and so they're all gauged differently 
And what I want to do is I want to find a gauge or a, a, a cleaning tip that has a small amount of drag on these pins. And I want to do it not on the one we're worried about. I want to gauge it to one of my other ones that I know are not a problem. So I'm going to try to do that, keep my arms out of the way while I'm doing this. It's kind of difficult. Um, I'm looking for one, again, that has some drag to it. And I'm just gonna pick one, I'm guessing here. And I'm gonna gauge it off of one of these other ones, not the one that we're worried about. I'm hoping it's not leaving so bad for me. That one's actually pretty good, that first try. So I can feel some slight drag on that pin. I can check one of the other ones. I'm not forcing this in any way, shape, or form. I'm just feeling the pin drag. In fact, you can hear that. And I'll come up here, and, and that's the right one I want to use now. This would be the gauge to check for pin drag. And I'm going to check this one right here, the one for our EGR. And I don't know if the camera's picking that up same exact pin drag as these other ones. So what we know now for a fact is that we don't have a spread pin. That would be the final variable here before we call this engine computer. This needs an engine computer. Now the thing is these GM computers, they go bad all the time, the older ones. And so I'm not really that concerned about it. In fact, this guy changed this computer is what he told me a few months ago for a stalling problem, which was pretty typical. So what we have inside of this board is somewhere between the 5-volt regulator and these two circuits that come out is we have an open in this board. And you know what I can do for the rest of this video, because I don't have another computer right now, is I'm going to jump this 5-volt reference over here, which is good, to this 5-volt reference over here, which is bad, and shoot the rest of the video to show you what this EVP signal looks like with a good reference. So, um, jumper wire, I'm just gonna take, and you know, it, you could probably do this permanently if you wanted to. You could take this gray wire here, which is a reference, uh, take the insulation off of it a little bit, same thing here, run a jumper between, solder it, tape it up. This is inside the car. I really wouldn't have a problem with that fix. You know, if this guy wants to do that, that's gonna be up to him. It needs a computer. Jump these two together, being fully confident in what I'm doing. And uh, I'm gonna turn the key on. We'll go back under the hood and redo our checks. Quick comment on this pin drag test I just showed you guys. Some of you might be thinking this is overkill, but hey, when it comes to calling a $1,300 computer, not that this car is, this one's about 100 bucks. These go bad all the time, but think about it. You got a $1,300 computer you're ready to call as being bad. Do you want to check pin drag to make sure? I would think so. So it's an important process. You need to know how to do it. Okay, we have the key on right now, and I'm back on my EVP signal wire with the multimeter. That's the middle wire on this five pin EGR valve. I'm reading 0.85 of a volt. That's what we want to see. When it comes to these, on the scan tool, you see the same number. We're reading 0.8 of a volt over here. And what I can do is uh, I'll energize the EGR valve, show you this signal over here. I'm just gonna use my ammeter again. And just to be clear about what I'm doing for that, think about it, we're using a voltmeter already. Your voltmeter ground, it's over here on the battery. Voltmeter uh, positive is on the signal. What I want to do is be the ground for the solenoid. So move this over to the solenoid wire. And you see we're reading 12 volts. And knowing your meter, just taking this lead over here, taking it away from that very, very high resistance that's in the voltmeter, moving it to the ammeter. And no reading up here. I'm still on voltage. Doesn't matter. I just connected this to ground. It clicked. You want a reading of amperage, you can move it over. reading 1.24 amps, very high current solenoid. Get you a shot back on the scan tool and you'll see that my EVP signal is uh, 4.7 volts. 
Take this off, watch the valve close. Point eight, energize it again, watch the valve open. That is a confirmed fix. When we replace this computer or if we do a jumper and, and, and do it that way, this car is gonna be fixed. All right, so quick recap of what we've done here. We did a nice review on a GM five pin linear EGR, also known as a digital EGR valve. Or no, I think the digital ones, I'm sorry, I'm using the wrong terminology. The digital ones were the three solenoid ones. This is a single solenoid. They call this a linear EGR. Very commonly used valve. Uh, Chrysler, Honda, GM, they all use a version of it. Testing is very similar, although be careful with your polarity. Some of the newer ones will power side switch them instead of ground side switched. Don't just get in there and start jumping things to ground unless you absolutely know what you're doing. I showed you a way to identify that with a voltmeter. For more info on that, that's section three, refer to it. Don't do this kind of procedure unless you absolutely know the polarity of that solenoid. So this one was ground side switched. Nice review of how to identify that with a voltmeter. Nice review of a potentiometer being a three wire sensor. Needs a reference ground and a signal to function properly. We are missing our reference and we also showed in here how to do a pin drag test on the computer and a nice review of that whole five volt reference circuit. So I think this was a really good one. Not just, don't look at this as a 95 Buick and how many of these are you gonna see. Look at this as a fundamental and these procedures that we've shown here apply to everything. So again, the fix here is gonna be a re, uh, replace the engine computer or at least jump those two wires together and, and uh, fix it that way. I really wouldn't have a problem with it because really that's what it's doing inside of the computer faulty leg of the 5 volt reference circuit.